Take your Bibles, Mark chapter 3. We'll begin reading verse 13. The Bible says, And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that, they might, that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. And Simon, he surnamed Peter, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Bonerges, uh, which is the sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and they went into and house. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Lord, I enjoyed all the singing. Lord, I, I was listening to the singing and the words and the songs. And my heart was blessed. And then I was reminded, Lord, all the singing was done without any music. And Lord, music is a blessing, but it's the words of the song that truly uh, set the tone for the preaching of the Word of God. And Lord, we enjoyed the good singing, we enjoyed the good testimony, we enjoyed being able to come to the house of God. Lord, it's only by your grace we're not in a hospital tonight, or a nursing home, uh, or we're bedridden at home, but Lord, you've been good to us. You gave us strength in our, in our body, and gave us a desire, and gave us the ability to be able to come out to the house of God. And it's for this reason we cry, thank you, Lord, uh, and we bless your holy name. Now, Lord, thank you for the reading of the Word of God. I pray now you'd help us to set in heavenly places. I pray you'd speak to our hearts. I pray you'd draw us closer to thee. Bless those that are working with the children on the other side. I certainly pray for any of those children that have reached the age of accountability and haven't trusted in Christ. I pray tonight would be the night they'd put their faith in the Lord Jesus. Uh, Father, I do pray for those that haven't reached the age of accountability that the Word of God would be planted deep in their heart and start to take root when they'd come to that uh, 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 place in their life where they can discern between good and evil. I pray they'd give their heart to Jesus at a young age. Uh, Father, I pray for those working with the teens and all the peer pressure and all the problems and all the things that the teens face on a regular basis as we found out uh, here a week or so ago. And Brother Clint got to testify now. Lord, we have no idea what these kids face at school and what they face in this whole world. Uh, God, I pray you'd undergird them, put a hedge about them. Uh, and I pray the Word of God would come alive in their soul and would uh, certainly help them to stand in the evil day because we're living in it. Uh, and God, I pray you'd bless our teens and God help them. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, God, speak to hearts, uh, and God, get glory to your glorious name. Well, thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful and long-suffering Lord Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, I, I want to draw your attention to several things uh, from these verses. Uh, I, first of all, I want you to notice the call. Look in verse number 13. Uh, said, He goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him... Uh, whom he would. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, 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 there's not much mention anymore about uh, a calling from God. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a lot of this charismatic crowd says you don't have to be called, you can just volunteer. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, if you're going to be uh, uh, used of God in a great capacity, God's got to put his hand on you. Uh, God's got to call you uh, uh, into the ministry. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, even here in Kentucky, a few years ago, there was a uh, a city trying to license preachers and uh, uh, giving them uh, 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 the uh, sanction uh, to be able to stand and have the profession of preaching on their name. Uh, and thanks be unto God, uh, uh, the Supreme Court of Kentucky then uh, uh, said a calling comes from God. Uh, it is something born in the heart of God uh, that God dispatches to certain individuals uh, and calls them out to be used for the gospel ministry. Uh, we see that uh, the Lord Jesus calls uh, 12 disciples uh, unto himself. Uh, 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 isn't it amazing? Uh, he's going to, in the next three years, uh, and a few years after that, uh, turn the world upside down with 12 of these uh, 
fellas, uh, and one of them is going to be of the devil. What an amazing thing that the Lord uh, can just take 12 and turn the world upside down. We see the call. Uh, notice the consecration. Uh, verse number 14 says, And he ordained 12 uh, that they should be with him. Now, Lord Jesus consecrated them or ordained them uh, uh, to be used uh, uh, for his honor and for his glory and to be with him and to learn of him. Now, listen, uh, I'm not against Bible college. I got a Bible degree. I thank God that there are some uh, uh, good Bible teachers out there, but it's getting harder and harder and harder and harder and harder to find a Bible college worth sending a kid to. Uh, but can you imagine the schooling these fellows are going to get? Uh they're going to hear from the master himself. Mm. They're going to be blessed to see things that uh, 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 they would have never dreamed of. And I'm telling you, he didn't call the mighty. He called fishermen. He called uh, uh, tax collectors. He called some of the uh, offscour of the world as the uh, Jews would look down upon them. But God knew exactly what he was doing, and he called men. I said men. He didn't call any women, and he didn't call any sissies. He called men because of what these men would have to endure for the cause of Christ. Uh, he called them, he ordained them, and then we find he commissions them. Look in verse number 14 again. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them, or commission them, for to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. Let me just stop right here. It has nothing to do with the message, but I'm going to say it. Because there's a lot of confusion in this world. First Corinthians uh, chapter 14, the Bible makes it clear God's not the author of confusion. Now the apostles, and I'll be an apostle, let me just clarify this, because down there where Brother Ethan's uh, from, there's a guy who totes around, so calls himself an apostle. Uh, Ethan, you ought to pop him in the nose, straighten him out. Uh, and then you can take him to ER and patch him up. Uh, that'd be a blessing. In order to be an apostle, you had to see Jesus Christ in the flesh. Now, if that joker's an apostle, he's about 2,000 years old. Mm, uh, uh, can I say that the apostles uh, uh, were the 11 called here, minus Judas Iscariot, and then the apostle Paul was the one that God ordained. Now, if you go study the book of Acts... Uh, the apostles, uh, when Judas was gone, they thought they needed another one, so they appointed one. We don't hear anything out of him anymore. Huh? His name is Matthias. We don't know anything about his deal. Uh, but God ordained the twelfth one, the apostle Paul. Now, God gave these men apostolic gifts. God gave them the ability to heal and the ability to uh, cast out demons and the ability to do uh, great and mighty works because, uh, my dear friends, the Jews required a sign. Uh, and God gave them these gifts uh, uh, so they could be a sign to an adulterous generation that Jesus was the Christ. Uh, and can I say, uh, the Apostle Paul pinned it down in 1 Corinthians there, uh, that when that which is perfect shall come, that which is in part shall be done away with. Uh, he said, prophecy shall fail, tongues shall cease. Uh, what was he saying? The apostolic gifts uh, would be uh, done away with when the apostles died, uh, but no fret. Uh, uh, we wouldn't need those special gifts anymore because we'd have the gift of the Word of God. Uh, and so then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, but he did ordain these men and gave them special gifts. They could cast out demons. I wouldn't recommend you trying to cast out a demon. Mm? Uh, uh, listen, I, I, I've heard young preachers say, boy, I want to get involved in an exorcism. Pastor. Well, you can have all that you want. Hmm? I don't want to mess with it. That's all woolly booger stuff to me, huh? I'm no match for the devil. The devil will absolutely run over me. Uh, 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 when the devil shows up, I want to get in the lap of the Lord and let him deal with the Lord. I, I don't want to have to take on the devil. Are you listening? Uh, say, Brother Doug, don't you have enough power? Don't you have enough? Th all I've got came from Jesus, and I let Jesus handle all that crap. I mean, if Michael, the archangel, didn't have cast accusation against Satan, uh, I'm not going to. Uh, I'll let the Lord handle that and do all the rebuking. But anyway, that's a whole other message. I'm interested in the 12 disciples tonight. And I find that they uh, not only were literal men and had literal lives and had like passions as you and I, but I find they also picture something. And I want to preach along these lines tonight. What a good night when the crowd is so thin.
I want to preach on types of disciples you'll find in the church. Types of disciples you'll find in church. And we do have one scriptural disciple here. We have Thaddeus. And if that's as scriptural as we get, we're all in trouble right over there, huh? But anyway, we do find types of disciples in the church. Can I say, first of all, in the church, and in every church I've ever been affiliated with, and in every pastor that I've ever talked with, uh, they have most of these guys in their church. And I'm just going to tell you that. And so well, let's just dive right into it. Can I say, first of all, you'll find they're stubborn ones in the church. They're stubborn ones in the church. Look at verse 16. And Simon, he surnamed Peter. Now, you talk about somebody stubborn. Jesus tells them, I'm getting ready to go up to Calvary, lay down my life. Uh, 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 I'll be uh, uh, betrayed and given into the hands of evil men that are going to crucify me. And Peter's like, not so, Lord. Mm -mm, nope, you're not. Nope, nope, nope. And the Lord says, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, 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 Jesus comes to wash their feet as an example. Uh, by the way, that's not uh, 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 one of the uh, 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 um, ordinances of the church, foot washing. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of your shoes. I don't want to see your feet. Are you listening? Huh? I see where you walk in shoot. Can't imagine how nasty some of your feet are. Uh, but hey, if Jesus told me to come over and wash your feet, I'd be honored to because the Lord told me to. Uh, the only problem is he didn't tell me to. When he washed feet, uh, it wasn't about washing the feet. You had to understand that was a custom of the day uh, 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 to show hospitality to your guests. Uh, but what he was showing is serve your brother. Uh, 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 humble yourself. Uh, don't be too big and too high and too mighty uh, uh, to do something for a brother or sister in need. Uh, and here Jesus comes uh, and he girds himself and he's going to wash his disciples' feet. Uh, Peter again, no, you're not washing my feet. Lord. Uh, he said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no place with me in the kingdom. Uh, he said, wash my head. Wash all of me. Uh, uh, wash my feet. Uh, uh, but it seems like every time the uh, uh, Lord would stop and say something, you had old stubborn Peter uh, 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 bucking the Lord, uh, always putting his two cents in with, open mouth, insert foot. Uh, even the night they come to arrest the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, Peter cuts off the ear of Malchus. Uh, hey, and Jesus said, if you're going to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. He's just stubborn. Mm -hmm. Can I say? They're stubborn Baptists everywhere I go. Think they know more than God. Certainly think they know more than a preacher. And they think they're too good and too big uh, uh, to do certain things around the church. Uh, it amazes me. Uh, uh, they want to share this. They want to be behind the platform. Uh, they want to sing. Uh, they want to speak. Uh, they want to teach. Uh, they want to be seen. Uh, but bless God, tell them they got to clean a toilet. Watch and see how uh, quick they uh, run and hit their car, huh? And by the way, uh, the preachers that stand behind this pulpit. If they wouldn't be willing to clean a toilet, they'd never get to stand behind this pulpit. Hmm. Because the one that stands behind here is nothing more than a mouthpiece for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're not willing to humble yourself and do anything around the house of God, you don't deserve to get to stand behind this sacred desk. And can I say there have been many times I've cleaned toilets around here and counted a privilege to be able to do it. Huh? This is God's house. And can I say there are stubborn ones in the house of God mm -hmm. stubborn ones preachers say we need to go in a building program but preacher that's going to cost some money duh yeah well we're going to take on a missionary but preacher we took on one last month hallelujah we're going to take on another one this month mm -hmm. of course around here we're liable to take on two or three a week you never know what I'm going to do uh but I'm telling you, there's always someone stubborn. We're going to have revival. Preacher, we've already had three. I'll never forget we had one guy who's in my mind strong right now. I'm trying not to be too vocal. You all figure out who it was. But back, man, when God started moving here, we started having revival meetings like crazy. I think we had 60 in three years, 60 meetings in three years. And I, I, there were some folks, if we would not have a meeting about every two or three weeks, they're saying, hey, preacher, when's the next meeting? You know. Well, this one guy's like, preacher, we only have two revivals around here. 
Oh, well, might have been. Same fellow when he went to start knocking on doors. I first became pastor here. I found a bunch of tracks back there in that old room, at, you know, where you used to do some of the books back there. And I said, we're going to go give these things out. He said, well, we gave out 500 one time, and nobody came. I said, I don't care. We're going to go knock on doors. Well, we've been knocking on doors ever since. He didn't think it'd work. Well, look how good God's been. I'm just trying to tell you, there's, you're always going to have somebody stubborn. Hmm? Can I say, the only one that can break a stubborn person is the Lord. Because hmm? he sure didn't know how to break Peter. By the way, if you got a little stubborn streak, Peter did have to go through the sifter. It'd be better to be humble and not have to go to the sifter. But can I say, you're going to find stubborn ones in the house of God. I'm trying not to look at some of you because some of you wives have told me about your husbands. Some of you husbands have told me about your wives. I'm just trying not to look at anybody, huh? Hmm? It's amazing, though. A lot of you's heads was bowed right there. It wasn't time to pray and go home. That's all I'm saying, huh? Can I say, not only will you find stubborn disciples in the church, you'll find super disciples in the church. They're super ones. Look at in, look in verse 17. And James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James. These were the sons of thunder. These were super disciples. Uh, we know John was the disciple whom Jesus loved. Every time the Lord would stop, there's old John with his head on a bosom, just loving on the Lord, just uh, enjoying being around the Lord. Uh, I mean, these two fellows, the sons of Zebedee, were fishermen. Uh, but Jesus came by and said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And oh, what fishers they became. Uh, I mean, the sons of thunder, uh, they were bold uh, in their preaching. They were impactful in their preaching. Uh, 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 they were uh, uh, men you could build upon. Uh, and these two men uh, gave it all they had for the cause of Christ, uh, they became super Christians, uh, uh, were used of God to not only pin part of the Bible, uh, uh, but to establish churches and to preach uh, and to evangelize. Uh, and no doubt many came to Christ because of these two men. Thank God for super disciples, super Christians. Something that you say we need to, and they just roll up their sleeves and go do it. Hmm? They don't wait around. Uh, they don't uh, hem haul around. Uh, 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 boy, I'm thankful we got folks around here. Uh, I just got to say, hey, we need some work done. Uh, there are folks around here that will roll their sleeves up. Uh, they'll show up. Uh, they'll say, preacher, what needs to be done? Uh, hey, they're just super disciples. Uh, we've even had some when... Uh, uh, we've had some around here that's caused a little problem, and I make a statement like, uh, uh, we're not going to tolerate that, and they come to me and say, okay, preacher, where's the problem? We'll take care of it. Hallelujah. Thank God for them. Huh? You say, well, I've never had to deal with them. That's a blessing. And thank God we haven't had any problems for a long time. But what a blessing to have super disciples. They just love the Bible. They love the Lord Jesus. They love being at church. They love singing the old songs of Zion. They just love everything about worship. Thank God for that crowd, huh? A crowd that shows up on Monday night going out, passing out tracks. Uh, 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 folks on their job, they're passing out tracks, uh, witnessing to folks, trying to be a blessing, uh, trying to point folks to Calvary and the Lord Jesus Christ. Just super disciples. Uh, what a blessing. We've got folks that are impactful, that are bold, uh, that aren't ashamed of the cause of Christ. Uh, they're stubborn disciples. They're super disciples. And then they're serving disciples. Verse 18's got a lot of fellows mentioned. But notice it talks about Andrew and Philip to start. These two fellows were servants. They served. Uh, you find them going and getting folks and bringing them to the Lord Jesus. You find them being sensitive. Philip... Uh, 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 there in Jerusalem, uh, revival breaking out, and God tells him uh, uh, to head south, head south, and he attaches himself to a chariot where there's an Ethiopian eunuch on there reading a Bible, trying to figure out what it meant. Uh, and there's Philip, just a servant, uh, willing to do what God wanted him to do. Uh, uh, Andrew uh, 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 went and got Peter and brought him to the Lord. I mean, uh, uh, you find these guys are just serving all the time. Uh, what about them? They didn't have to be the preacher at Pentecost. Uh, they didn't have to be the 
one laying on the bosom of the Lord known as the uh, disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, they were just happy to be a part of the crowd, uh, happy to serve, happy to do what they could do uh, uh, to honor the Lord Jesus. Uh, hey, you need servants in the house of God. Uh, uh, you need folks that are willing to do uh, uh, the menial things, uh, the things where there ain't any glory in it, uh, uh, some things that most people won't thank you for or take notice of, uh, but need to be done. Uh, thank you for those that run a vacuum sweeper. Uh, for those that empty the trash. Uh, hey, we got teenage boys every Sunday night take the trash cans uh, uh, down to the uh, uh, curb. Uh, and we got a fella uh, every Tuesday. You never see him. Uh, but he comes and he gets the trash cans and brings them back and puts them back here behind the building. Uh, I mean, just folks uh, willing to serve. Uh, willing to mow the grass. Uh, willing to plant flowers. Uh, willing to work around the house of God when nobody's around. Uh, hey, I say blessed be the Lord for servants in the house of God. Uh, you know, too many times the things are going good, the preacher gets too much credit. When things are going bad, he gets too much blame. But I'm telling you, what gets done for the house of God most of the time doesn't, it has nothing to do with the preacher. It's folks who just serve the Lord. Mm, I praise the Lord we got servants. Let me just say this, in the average independent Baptist church, 90% of the work gets done by 10% of the people. That's a known fact. It's been known for decades. What can I say in our church, we got about 45, 50% of the folks doing something in the house of God. And I say, bless the Lord. Hey, I don't know why the Lord's enlarged my coast and why so many churches want me to come preach revival, so many pastors want me to come preach revival or preach for them, but I'm not here all the time. If it hinged on me, nothing would get done. But we've got folks who are servants, and I'm thankful we got folks. Uh, they miss me when I'm gone, but they're also proud they got a preacher that other people want to hear. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, when I'm gone, you pray for me. And when I'm gone, I don't have to worry. Uh, I, I, I know uh, 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 this thing's going to just continue to roll, and folks are going to serve God, and folks are going to worship the Lord. Uh, I'm thankful we got preachers that can stand and deliver the mail. Uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, when I'm gone, Brother Randy don't take off. Uh, I'm glad the sound man's here. Uh, I'm glad when I'm gone, singers don't take off. They'll show up and sing. Uh, Sunday school teachers will teach. Uh, those that clean will clean. Hey, uh, it's a blessing that so many people are involved. Their fingerprints uh, are on the house of God. Uh, uh, so many of his fingerprints are on those kids over there. Uh, hey, they, they've gotten saved not because of the preacher, uh, uh, because of moms and dads that prayed over them, uh, Sunday school teachers that have taught them, uh, uh, folks over there on Sunday nights who have taught them, uh, hey, uh, folks in the sanctuary who've been good to them and kind to them uh, and made certain there was an atmosphere of fear of worship uh, and so the Holy Ghost could speak to their tender hearts. Uh, what a blessing to be a part of a church where folks just get it. Hallelujah. Huh? Too many churches are war zones. You know what the house of God is supposed to be? A love fest. Uh, well, That's where the family gets together and has reunion three times a week. huh? And thanks be unto God to those that serve. There are folks that you never see do anything that do a whole lot around here. But I'm glad to report Jesus sees it all. Hmm? Uh, I wish you could see things from my perspective. I wish you could see the things gets done that I see gets done. I just bless the Lord for serving disciples. And then can I say there are steadfast disciples. Those you can just count on. I mean, you got Matthew mentioned. Matthew was just faithful he'd been a tax collector uh, they thought about tax collectors in his day worse than we think about the IRS in our day that's what he was Jesus came by and said come follow me he said okay I think I will uh, and Matthew was just steady steadfast and then you also had James the son of Alphaeus he's known uh, as James the lesser yeah, James, the son of thunder. He was James, the, the big James. And this was just little lesser James. Wasn't as popular. Wasn't much said about him. But one thing you can say about him, he was steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Thank God for steadfast, folks. You here tonight. 
steadfast. I thank God for you. Huh? I heard this this past week. Thought it was pretty good. Wrote it down. It's kind of where probably the whole message came from. This little thought. He said, "There's too many that have Dalmatian faithfulness. They're a little spotty." Hmm. Well, I'm thankful for those that are steadfast. And I say every time I come to church, there's some of you I never doubt that you're not going to be here. Because you have been. Some of you have been steadfast for 20 years, 15 years, 13. I mean, there's some of you, if you're not here, it's cause of concern. There's something that has really befallen you if you're not here. huh? And I'm thankful for you. I thank God for the steadfast steadfast crowd huh? anybody can blow in or out but when the winds of adversity are blowing and you're steadfast that's saying something and I thank God for the steadfast ones ones you can count on ones you know are going to be there hmm? listen I don't know if you know this but the pastor's human you may not know this the pastor doesn't have a special bone or special muscle structure I'm cut out of the same cloth you are. And you might not know this, but the pastor can get discouraged. You know, when the pastor studies and seeks the mind of God and tries to have a message, and when the pastor doesn't feel good, but he still comes to church because he wants to deliver what God showed him, wants to try and be a blessing, and the pastor shows up, and there's some that don't even bother to let him know why they're not there, that can be discouraging. But I'm sure thankful for that steadfast crowd. They're going to be there. They're going to be sitting there on the edge of their seat with bells and whistles on, ready for what God has. What a blessing. Hey, come what may, I know Dr. Phil's going to be here, and he's going to shout his lungs out. I just know that. Why? Because he's proven it for the last 15 years or however long he's been hanging around. Longer than that, you start coming when he's in the old building. Yeah. He come because he heard we had some bluegrass music, so he started showing up every now and then. Uh, I like it when he plays the mandolin, not so much when he plays the sixer. When he plays his mandolin, he gets to bobbing his head like that little dog used to have in the back of your, back of your car. I like it. But he's steadfast, and many of you are steadfast, and you'll never know what, you're, what a blessing you are to this church, what a blessing you are to this preacher we get to heaven you're going to find out what a blessing you were to the Lord that you were steadfast thank God for steadfast Christians and then let me say this they were silent ones just silent disciples verse 18 it mentions two of them Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanite now unless you know him real well he's pretty silent you never hear him say amen I've never seen him just jump up and shout her out like Phil does. He says Phil does enough of that for the both of them. So he just, uh. Now, if you know him real well and you get him outside the sanctuary, there's no telling what he's going to say to you. But for the most part, he's pretty silent. And Simon the Canaanite was fine. You know, if you study the scriptures, you find them mentioned a few times, but you never ever hear of a message they preached. We don't know of any churches they pastored or started. We don't know of any great revival campaigns they were part of. We really don't know much of them other than that they're just mentioned a couple times in the ministry of Jesus. They're just silent ones. But that don't mean that God didn't use them in a great way. He just chose not to pin down much about them. They may have been used to pastor some of the greatest churches that were ever pastored. They may have been used to uh, uh, preach in campaigns where multitudes came to Christ uh, 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 through maybe their giving spirits. Uh, they may have given more than anybody else gave. We don't know what they did. It was silent on them. Uh, and I uh, caution you to say, uh, see this uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, just because you don't hear a lot out of somebody and just because you don't see a lot out of somebody don't mean God's not using them. Uh, don't mean that uh, God's uh, 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 they're not a blessing to God's church. Uh, hey, they may be doing stuff in the shadows. You 
never see you. They might be up long before anybody else gets up and they've grabbed the horns of the altar uh, and calling on God and praying for the church, uh, praying for revival, praying for sinners to be saved, uh, praying for the preacher. Uh, hey, they may give more than anybody else gives. Uh, they may do things in the shadows that nobody else sees. Uh, hey, uh, don't get caught up in this thing of looking around trying to figure out what people are doing, what they're not doing. You just be concerned with what you're doing. Uh, and you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but neighbor, you mark her down. Uh, it's not going to be the big preachers and the loud preachers uh, uh, that get first place in heaven. Uh, uh, it's going to be some of these little grandmas and grandpas uh, you never heard anything out of. Uh, but they were faithful. Uh, and God uh, honored their faith. Uh, and God honored their giving. Uh, and just like that widow that gave up all she had with her widow's might, uh, they're going to be ushered in far above a lot of preachers one of these days. Those silent ones might be the very ones that keep the whole thing going. You don't know. Listen, I don't know a whole lot about cars anymore. Because, I mean, you got to have a computer programming degree just to figure out why, why it doesn't run right. Or duct tape. You put duct tape over that check engine light, it never bother you. Been on my truck for about six months now. I just keep cranking her up and driving her. She's running well, huh? But listen, if your tire goes flat, you know it. Uh, if your engine gets to knocking, you know it. But sometimes it's just a little part, like a sensor, that gets clogged up that'll cause your car not to run right. It's that little bitty old nothing part that keeps your car from functioning properly. And can I say it? Sometimes it's those silent ones that keep it running right. Are you listening? Thank God for silent disciples. And that's as big a compliment as I can ever give you, Brother Thad. You're just silent while we're in the church. But anyway. Uh, but then it kind of takes a turn there are skeptical ones skeptical ones we find in verse he is a good guy Dr. Phil uh, you'll find everybody knows about Thomas you know, we know the adjective associated with him doubting Thomas but did you know Bartholomew was also skeptical? Now, Bar Bartholomew was really his given name, his surname, what most people called him. You know how somebody's got a proper name and then everybody calls him by something else? Well, what he was really called by by his friends is Nathaniel. And you'll know over there in John chapter 1, verse uh, about verse 46, that Philip, found Nathanael and brought him to Jesus. And you'll find in verse 46, the Bible says, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Even before he got saved, he was skeptical. And he got down there and the Lord said, Wow. And he says, We got a, 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 a disciple indeed where there's no guile found in him. He says, Well, how do you know me? He said, I saw you over there under the tree when Philip found you. Hmm? And then he realized he was the Lord. But can I say he was skeptical? And both Thomas and Nathaniel did no great works because they had no faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Matter of fact, the first time the Lord Jesus shows himself to the disciples after resurrection, Thomas wasn't there. He was one of them spotty Christians. He wasn't there. Hmm? I guarantee you, when you miss church, something will happen. There'll be something, the Lord will show up, and you'll hear something that you should have heard, and you won't hear it. And by the way, everybody in here can testify. You can get the CD. You can watch it on YouTube. It's not the same as being here. Uh, they were skeptical. They just didn't go all in. It was constantly questioning. Well, why do we got to go here? Why do we got to go there? Why do we got to do this? Why does the Lord want us to do that? Why do we got to do this? Why, why can't we take off on Sunday night? Uh, 
we if we quit having church on Sunday night, the crowds would be bigger. No. Then they'd want to quit Wednesday night. Then they'd want to quit Sunday school. So you give the devil an inch, he takes a mile. You know what? I've never had anybody just come out and say, Preacher, why don't we just go to church every night of the week for about six months? I've never had anybody say that. Well, Phil, he's all for it. He gave me a second motion right there, huh? Uh, why is that? Why do we want to take away instead of add to? Because hmm? human nature. We want more of the world than we want of the Lord. Hmm? We're skeptical, skeptical, skeptical. Uh, I was absolutely flabbergasted where I was this past week in that part of Virginia. They're just now starting to get back to doing things because of COVID. I was blown away. I was blown away at how many places they were still wearing masks and how many people were still wearing masks and how some of the restaurants you weren't even allowed to still go inside and eat. And I was just blown away. I thought, man, I thought we was past all this. I mean, even Grouchy Fauci don't show up anymore. I mean, what, what's going on down here? But I was just blown away. And all I kept hearing was, man, the COVID, the COVID, the COVID, the COVID, the COVID. And you know why a lot of those churches are closing? Because they let COVID rule instead of Christ. I told you all back then, yeah, it was a real thing, but I just had enough faith in Christ. Sure has been good to us. I tell you, they're skeptical ones. Always worried about everything going on. You know, worry is a sin. But if you're going to worry about something, why don't you worry about how close enough, if you're close enough to God? That's what you ought to worry about, hmm? Am I following the Lord Jesus the way he wants me to? They're skeptical ones. Well, let me get to the last one. Then there's the sinful one. Judas Iscariot, which would betray him. I read a book one time, and I disagree with the author. He said that Judas could have never gotten saved. Hogwash. I believe up till the night of the, of the Last Supper, when he left out and then Satan entered into him, I believe up until that point he could have got born again. He heard every message Jesus preached. He saw all the miracles Jesus did. He showed all the love and compassion that Jesus had for sinners. Uh, he saw everything that the Lord was doing and all the while Jesus treated him like a friend, just like the others. And he could have got saved. But he did. Judas had a pride problem he had a heart problem he had a self-sufficiency problem didn't take much for Judas to betray the Lord he was always looking out for Judas 30 pieces of silver he said oh yeah that's more than I'd make in 10 years yeah load me up uh, but it happened long before then that alabaster box that Miss Brittany sang about this morning, Judas, he, he said and told the Lord that was a waste. That could have been sold and given to the poor. He didn't want to give it to the poor. He was the one that held the money bag. He wanted it for himself. Can I say? He was just sinful, just lost. And friend, hear me. I can't look into anybody's heart but if you think everybody that comes to church is saved, there's something wrong with you. Not everybody that comes to church is saved. We've seen folks around here that were church members who ended up getting born again. They went through a course of events, but they never got born again. They said a prayer. They went with somebody and answered yes to a bunch of questions, but the Holy Ghost wasn't dealing with them. And never got born again. Thank God for old time conviction. Thank God for the drawing of the Holy Ghost. And thank God for truly being born again. Not everybody that comes to church is born again. Not everybody that's on the church roll is on heaven's roll. Not everybody that's been baptized has been baptized by the Holy Ghost. Hmm? There are folks who come to church that don't know the Lord. They're just like Judas. I preached a message one time. He kissed the door to heaven and he died and went to hell. 
Listen, it would be terrible to die and go to hell from anywhere. But it would be far worse dying and going to hell from an independent Baptist church where the truth's been preached than to die and go to hell from the Lutheran church up the street. Listen, there are folks that got too much pride to admit they need to get born again. They put on too much of a facade, too much of a, uh, a show to admit they need to be born again. Now listen, I know, again, I know there are folks providentially hindered. I know there are folks working tonight. I know there are folks out of town tonight. I know there are folks sick tonight. But if you have a regular problem getting to church, you've got a heart problem. Hmm? And by the way, Brother Eddie, if, if the Holy Ghost can't get you here, don't expect me to come hunting you down on Monday. Because hmm? I don't want you coming because the preacher came and knocked on your door. If you love Jesus, you want to be in the house of God. Even when you can't be here, you want to be in the house of God. Miss Marcy, when you was in the hospital, you wanted to be at the house of God. Hmm? Huh? There's no doubt about that. Huh? Miss Crystal, even when you're running late, you want to get here. Huh? But I have noticed you've been on time both service. It must be Donald that hangs you up around the house. All right, all right, yeah, that's it. All right. But you see, folks got a heart problem. Uh, they're never late for work. They never miss work. I guarantee you there were folks who weren't in the house of God today, but they'll be on the job tomorrow because they think they can't live without their paycheck. They don't realize who gave them their job. Hmm. Uh, Judas, he was just sinful, but he had too much pride to accept the Lord. I've said all that to say this tonight. What kind of disciple are you? And see, that can't be answered by you. Because you know who called Simon Peter? The Lord. See, the Lord's the one that has to tell you what kind of disciple you are. He's the one that has to tell me what kind of disciple I am. I wonder, what kind of disciples are we? Are we the kind that he can take and turn the world upside down with? Or is, does he look at us like he did Capernaum? and said, if all the works that were done in you would have been done down there at Sodom and Gomorrah, they'd gotten born again. Hmm. I wonder, what kind of disciple are we? Are we disciples the Lord's proud of? Or are we disciples that he's ashamed of? You remember when they're beating him in the hall praetorium and he looked and there's Peter out there warming by the devil's fire and just his look broke Peter's heart I wonder when he looks at us what it does to us I love you I thank God for you but I can help you right now we all from the pulpit to the back pew have room for improvement hmm Listen, I'm glad I'm not what I used to be, but I can tell you right now, I'm not always what I should be. And God help us to have a desire to be a disciple that he's pleased with. What kind of disciple are you tonight? It's all stand. Brother Clint, come get your guitar and pick out something for an invitation. While he, he's coming, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do bless your holy name. Lord, just being named among you and among your, your people and your church is a blessing. Lord, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad for that night, third Saturday night of March, 1974. Lord, when you saved me and changed my life. Lord, I confess I'm not always what I should be. So God, I pray for that grace and that mercy that you have be bestowed that God help me to be all that I can be for you and for your glory you've been so good to me I want to be good back to you now help us Lord tonight to realize this is a serious thing and Lord help us to conduct ourselves in a manner that pleases almighty God now, Lord I realize in here tonight are some of your choicest servants and I pray you'd bless them abundantly and help them to be all they can be for you. But help us to do inventory. And God show us where we need to move up. And God will bless you for it. Have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name.
Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.